welcome to Bitter Coffee, a comedy podcast from two friends who are just about over it. I'm Derek Van. I'm Kelly Coffee, And I'm Mo Citro. Hey, hey. Mo's back, Mo's back. Hey. Three friends doing a comedy podcast. Comedy podcast. Greetings and salutations. Absolutely. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are in the process of recording on another lovely, though dreary, Saturday here in the wonderful Bitter Coffee recording studio, but it's special Saturday because it's 420. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing that. Expect to hear more of that this evening. <laughs> You're going to hear more of that sound throughout the show. <laughs> Do you need a minute? Go ahead. <laughs> no, Riff a little bit. It's fine. Really? I thought you were going to say it's a special day because it's what Catholics refer to as Holy, uh, Saturday. Holy Saturday. Oh. Or as I like to call it, Jesus' travel day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Jesus' yes. travel day. It's his, he actually was resting. Right. But right. like in sports, there's like there's a big game <laughs> right. on yeah. a Friday. And then you have a travel and day. And then another game on a yep. Sunday. It's so a, in between. It's a bye week for him. <laughs> yep. It's a bye week. It's a bye day. <laughs> <laughs> that was, exactly. uh, was that the lightning sound? bolt. Yeah. Yep. That was the blasphemy hitting you yes. right in the face? Yep. 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 I it's actually fine. went to Mass yesterday. I'm just going to put that out there. Oh, we're really? Good, for Good Friday? Friday? I was walking home. St. Joseph's Cathedral's in my backyard. So it was three o'clock. I said, "Oh, I might as well go." There you go. It's twelve to three. You're supposed to not do anything as a Catholic because that's when Correct. allegedly that's when Jesus was on the cross mm. or dragging the cross, right, or whatever. Like it was just it was a it was a tough afternoon mm-hmm. for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so all right, I think that's enough Catholicism for one <laughs> for one podcast for one whole show. That's okay, good. Um, what do we have? today so uh first of all thanks everybody for listening and commenting and uh coming at us with your various feedback we're gonna get into a little bit of that but i know that we had a couple of reviews that you wanted to get to um so let's look at that thank you everybody for Mm, you no. know have we, i don't know there's we, one that i can't figure out okay i don't know difficult to discern it is okay and when i read it you know what i'm i'm probably gonna have to have the listeners you're definitely better with looking into the reviews i cough, constantly forget to even check them so when we come in you're like oh there's a couple of reviews great i'd love to hear them so i'm interested even, to, about interpreting interpreting these reviews i don't even know where to go to read them <laughs> it's it is kind of buried itunes doesn't actually make it super easy to get to necessarily easy to leave a review more difficult to read the reviews All right, uh, this one, hang on a second. This one is from Birdland Matt, which I think is a great screen name. Nice. Um, You all don't even know. No, it's true. Is the subject. It's true. And then uh, uh, he goes on, and his name is Birdland Matt. Did I already say that? You did now. Okay. Um, This is from Birdland Matt. Uh, Y'all don't even know how funny and intellectually edifying bitter coffee is. Things you'll learn about. Marble Olympics. Of course. Navigating the treacherous waters of listening to popular music made by problematic artists. Mm, mm, Your faves are problematic. How to ensure your local utility providers and DMV clerks will grow to loathe you, (laughs) in parentheses, in a good way. But in a good way. In a positive way. That Abacab may be Kelly's fave Genesis album, but Mm. definitely not yours. (laughs) Derek's long con retirement plan involving children dusty musical instruments and hope slash prayers yes as are all my plans so much more Uh uh-huh thanks birdland matt birdland matt thanks so much for the great review i love that but i'm not sure no it's a great i think it's a great encapsulation like the abacab thing kind of threw me off was i was i belligerent (laughs) in saying that abacab might be my favorite genesis record i think you're just trying to speak your truth kelly is that what it was no i think it was fine no one's gonna you know give you any guff about it it's a great album it's if, a great if album. people are firing off like names of genesis albums and have opinions great we'd love to hear them but i think okay. yeah abacab no no shame no shame all right i just i okay well thanks brother matt for that thanks, great bro. review i like it and there was another even there's another one all right great uh this is from and i'm on the fence with how this person's screen i is saw pronounced. this screen name because you could you could break it up a couple different ways go ahead so i don't know if it's Banjo's Lives. Right. Or Banjo's Lives. <laughs> right. Right. But there's an exclamation point, so they're really happy about it either way. <laughs> <laughs> I love a live banjo, and I like the fact that banjos are alive. So either way, yeah. I'm, I'm pleased. Um, and I know this person. Great. Uh, which is nice that she's listening to the show. Um, so title of her review is Just whis- Listen, Will Ya? Makes sense. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, listening to these two brings me back to the old days of Marchfeld VP, which is 
the address that her grandmother put on a birthday card one year, and I thought it was hilarious. Okay. But her grandmother was in her 90s. All right. But, like, it got to her. It was, like, the wrong name of, the, <laughs> of town and a different state. There's no state that's VP. But the, <laughs> but, but the post office but is like, we get it. Yeah, we know like, what you're trying to say. close enough. Nice. That's Vermont, if you didn't know. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Kelly's hilarious, and you just can't not laugh unless you're a prude. Oh. I'll be listening all the time. Sugar bush for life. <laughs> Hashtag sugar bush nice. for life. Nice. Uh, thanks, Catchpole. Nice. Thanks so much for that review. Banjo's lives Banjo's or Banjo's lives, live, or whatever. Whichever, either way, yeah. uh, both are true. <laughs> Steve so, Martin would agree. Yeah. Banjos live. So uh, thanks for the great review. Thanks so much guys. for the reviews. We really appreciate everybody uh, chiming in on the iTunes reviews. Thanks very much for that. If you have not left us a review, we will shamelessly plug that you go over to iTunes and leave us a quick review. It really does help us uh, both in our ego and in the fact that the more reviews you get, generally more people are able to listen to your show. I don't know how exactly iTunes works on the back end. It doesn't make any sense to me. Just go in there and please review us. We'd appreciate it. Helps Perfect. in the ego. Helps in the ego Helps mostly. The ego. Yep. That's the number one thing. Ego boost. <laughs> So we are here. It is a rainy day. We have our tea. We have our water. We're ready to go. Mm-hmm. W- what do you want? What do you want to talk about? A um, couple things I'm going to talk about right okay. off the bat. Um, if you guys are okay with it, I'm, I'm going to talk about the the new um, road situation <laughs> here uh-huh. in Yeah, there was some really interesting uh, back and forth on the old face space yeah. about the new exit plan for Exit 16 here in Winooski. Uh, if you have not seen it, feel free to swing over to either Kelly or I's Facebook page. There are some plans in place, and they are weird plans. For road vaginas. <laughs> yes. Essentially, the town will be installing a pair of road vaginas near Exit 16. It make a no sense. Is it a go? It- <laughs> oh, it's a go. It's a go? You know what? In a word, finally. <laughs> it's been it's been on the plans for years. Yeah. We've been asking. We've well, petitioned. Yeah. You know, Winooski is spatting a thousand now when it comes to road. <laughs> yeah. I, I think what I had said was um, that that lovely circle in yeah. the middle of Winooski. The, I think the, what I had put it on Facebook wonderful. was the, the rotary was like, you'll never find a more dysfunctional road function than me. Seriously. And then exit 16 was like, hold my beer. Exactly. <laughs> I got you, fam. Exactly. You it's weird. It it the angles that they ch- chose to share in terms of the pictures. It was really hard to discern what was even happening with the traffic pattern. Basically, people can't even navigate that circle, as you right. pointed out, Mo. And now they're going to somehow do this weird interchange. Basically, the town is going to install figure eight demo derby at that exit. It yeah, looks like. I agree. Um, great. I'm all for <clears throat> it. People aren't already getting enough accidents there. There actually is one of those, and I can't remember where it is. It's in Wyoming or De- in Colorado. That it I've feels. Seen much more like a Wyoming road and structure it, than a Vermont it, I, road structure. Apparently it works. Hmm. So wait, isn't it, they're not just coming out of this Oh uh, no, I, I'm reserving air. judgment certainly, uh, but it looks a mess. Yeah. I'm not on board. <laughs> <laughs> Aesthetically. Aesthetically? Yes. I mean, totally. uh, who, it's a yes. who am I to say, oh, no vaginas in the roads in my town? <laughs> two of them, no less. There's two of them. Facing each other. You yep. never oppose that. However, <laughs> the traffic pattern piece of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and well. it's great because it'll be a good way to give directions. Sure. So you're going to get off the interstate and on your left, you're going to see a couple road vaginas. <laughs> I'm like a half a mile up the road on your left. <laughs> Turn left after the first vagina. Exactly. If you get to the second vagina, you're in trouble. Did you've you gone say, too far. Gone too did far. you say take a left at the Volvo? <laughs> no. No, I did not say Volvo. Nope. Nope. nope I didn't. So that's Close, exciting. Though. So big things are happening in my town. That and... Uh, Michelle this morning sent me a video of a rat running down the street. <laughs> so we're, we may have to put that on the Facebook. So that as well. was exciting. Yeah, I yeah. Think you should yeah. To give a visual. So she was excited because she had never seen a rat, right? In Winooski. In Winooski. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, now Not a I don't. Live one. I don't want first live rat. I said. think. So. Oh, really? Yeah. That's like no that's kidding. It's like I feel like I married a stranger. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't want to generalize, but you lived in New York for a period of time. I so I imagine this would not be your first live rat experience. And that, when, that was one of the first things I said to Michelle. <laughs> uh-huh. Like I got, I was like, well, you know what? I'm used to this. <laughs> this is old rat like to I me. Like I live in was the wild. pizza? Then exactly. back off. <laughs> I remember just rats on the subway track sometimes. Yep. And every once in a while they would climb up the side of the platform oh, and then kind of make their way to, I guess, like work or school or wherever they were going. <laughs> rat and, college. And I was, I was standing. Standing on the corner of Hudson Street and I forget the cross street, but I was waiting for the light to change and a rat crawl over my shoes oh, and God. then into the sewer next to me. Uh-huh. So you know what I did? 
I took my shoes off. <laughs> I threw them in a garbage can. <laughs> And then I went into a store, shoeless, got new shoes, and bought new shoes. Wow! And socks. Those wow. shoes have been sullied. Oh, and it socks! Was you were like, I don't want to risk it. No, I mean, <laughs> I had to keep the socks on penetrated. until I got to the store. But after oh, that's that, true. You, like, no, you sullied the socks yeah. via New York roads. And the person understood. Yeah. <laughs> like I walked in without shoes and just socks, and I said, like, I'm, I'm not going to cause a scene. Uh-huh. I just had a rat crawl over my <laughs> shoes, and she was like, mm-hmm, Fair enough. Let me show yeah. you to the emergency rat shoe section exactly. that we have uh, laid so, out over here. Yeah, that was that. was that. Back when you were in the rat race. Oh. Ew. 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 <laughs> 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 you gotta keep that app gotta open. Gotta be quick with that. There we, go. Um, there we go. What else do we have? What else, what else is going on? So, speaking of Facebook, something happened recently, actually just yesterday, that I wanted to touch on quickly. I put up what I thought was an innocuous Facebook post with a very simple question. And that question related to how many spaces do you put after a period Two. in a Two. sentence? It's a it's a English law. It's English law. All right. It is. We're going to get into this because <laughs> so this all came out of a Twitter post that I happened to see yesterday that was about the Mueller report actually. We're not going to I'm not going to delve into that black hole, but it's, is is it single space? So the the Twitter post was like I it said, "I have no joy in sharing this, but there are two spaces after every period in the Mueller report." Yes. That was the whole tweet. Fair enough. I opened the tweet to look at the comments, <laughs> expecting people to be like, ha ha, obviously. It was all defending two spaces. As it should. Okay, Amen. okay. Let So let's get into this quickly. So I put up this poll on the Facebook page and people voted. The first, like, 15 votes were for two spaces and I felt like I was living in a parallel universe because <laughs> in my life, in the current state in which I live, in my job as somebody who writes professionally, essentially, I just thought that we had moved on. We had moved on from two two spaces. I was also taught two spaces in school. Yeah. Everybody was taught two spaces in school. In, it was the is, way it only, was done. Not only English, but in typing. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. that's where it comes from. Yeah, is the is the dual space yeah. in typing. Yeah. Everyone was taught that. However, the the standard has actually changed to one space, like via all the style guides. No, 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 no. I did not I, get the memo. I'm gonna, uh, no, well, I'm, I'm well gonna, here's the thing. I don't distribute those right widely. There. <laughs> the standard has not changed. Millennials took it upon themselves Amen. to change it on their behalf. Preach. Up top. Preach. There yes. we go. That's what happens. Strenuous object. Ugh. You try reading a book where there's only a single space after a period. I, I, <laughs> you can't do it. I I vehemently disagree. Why, I vehemently why do you, disagree. Why do you disagree? Because I don't have a problem with it. So Because you're a millennial. I'm not, though. Mm. I am nearly 38 years old. I was also taught that you make you put two spaces. The only reason you were taught so that, then that is was because the standard. that was the standard. So the standard percent. can't change. Ah, language. So yes, oh it can. This is the way we work. Everything changes. There are no rules. They evolve. You evolve with the times. First and they the took times away cursive. <laughs> And now they freaking the incredibly useful yep. and always used in everything cursive. Yep, I yes. once believed that I couldn't cash a check unless it was written in cursive. I was told I that, that you was wouldn't a, be able to cash adorable. your check. That is I, adorable. I believed that for five years of my check writing life, and it was the only time I ever wrote in cursive was on a wow. check. I believed that. So same idea. So this is everyone was taught this, and we have we have gotten past it because it was put in place for typesetting, manual typesetting, because you had to put more space. It, it, it goes all back to like monospace type and it, it's just a whole background story about how it was done and why it was done it, <laughs> in modern in modern writing and language it Kelly. is no longer necessary no, Kelly done, has just, looked, just has reading, a reference a manual no I'm reading a book <laughs> I'm bored with the conversation so I'm doing homework I'm bored. So. It has violence. So I'm right on title, chapter I eight. So yeah. I, I'm just fascinated by the fact that people have flex. strong opinions oh, about this. Okay. I thought it was a throwaway thing that no one would care about. The, I the Twitter comments are like well. out of control. Um, because in email, you still do the double space. No, so absolutely because not. Because we live in a society where we're not a bunch of animals just single spacing <laughs> our way through the world. Instead, we're wasting time putting an extra space because between if you our do sentences. One space, it's too close it's together. It's too close. I, I, I disagree. Red, I think if you were to look. Any book off the bookshelf behind you. Either one 
of yeah. you. All of these books were written before the standard came out. When's the standard? When come did out? the standard come out? Sometime in the last ten years. Or oh so. my god. Oh okay. Oh oh okay. So what you're saying is I can pick up any book uh-huh. written within the last ten years, mm-hmm. and there's going to be a single space after a period. No, because people don't pick up the standard once it's established. Then it's not a standard if yeah. it's not picked up and <laughs> but established. But we'll never get there if people don't start doing it. I think you're in the minority on this. Yeah. No. I would no. love to hear from people about it. I'm absolutely in the minority. Yeah. I'm absolutely in the minority, which blows my mind. But you're even, it's even more than that. It's not even the minority. It's like a, what is the next thing down? Oh. Uh, singularity? A singleton? A singleton? Is that what You were the only person. You are in the singleton. <laughs> Don't lump me in with the singletons. I refuse. Your paper Fast. towels I refuse. and your one space. That's you. Your selecticized goddamn paper <laughs> towels right. and your I single just, spaces. I worry about the kind of world that you're bringing a child into. <laughs> That's right. If you feel that a single oh. space, you know what it is? And here's this is my theory, mm-hmm. and well, it's my show, so I can talk about it. <laughs> Millennials don't care. They're like, ah, one space. Ain't nobody got time for two spaces after a sentence. No, it's not how the world works. It's not how it works. Because you yourself said that in the interest of time, that second space is a waste of one's time, right? I I mean, that's a pedantic argument. I'm not saying that like another space is actually more time. But it was one of your primary arguments. So one could could deduce that (laughs) millennials feel that a single space is appropriate because it's a time saver. No, I, if, if someone actually made that argument and that was what they were standing on, I'd just say, get over get over yourself. Uh, I'm not gonna, honestly, when I read an email at my job in which I write for my work, if there is an email that I get that has two spaces after a period, I think to myself, well, this person hasn't written anything since high school. Oh, I thought you were going to say, what a wonderful world. No, I think to myself, <laughs> what a wonderful email. I'm looking email. at email now to see if it's if there so you go. true. Most people say that if you're writing an email, generally speaking, if there's one space, that's fine. If you're on Twitter, if there's one space, that's fine. But if you're writing anything formal, there should be two spaces. All of the style guides have now changed their standard to say one space after a period. Huh? So oh, that's no. just the way it is. What style guides? AP style guide, the Chicago style guide, the actual writing guides that people use to write things. But I write all of my research papers Mm -hmm. in APA, and it's a double space. It used to be a double space. space. Okay, like yesterday? No. Okay. Last couple years. Uh, You know what? I don't want to talk about (laughs) it. Let's not fight. Let's not fight. Let's not fight. I just think it's amazing that people have strong opinions. That's what I think. That this kind of thing, honestly, it's a heated debate. Heated debate. Heated. It's a robust argument. I like what you had said. What did you say? Embrace differences, right? Is that what you had said? Celebrate diversity. Celebrate diversity. Thank you. And I agree. You write how you want to write out there in the world. Even if it is wrong and includes two spaces after a period. No, I mean, if you want to have just the one space because you're lazy, (laughs) you do you, but I'm probably not going to read your email. I have a question, though. Is it hard to break the habit of going from two spaces to one space? Oh, 100%. If you were taught that way. Yes. And so why would you modify that? Again, that's that's up to you, the individual. That's a great question. Other than you want to evolve and you want to move with the times. Oh just saying. Christ. Just saying. Okay. All right, let's move on. Let's yeah. move on. We, we could we could spend all day. I could talk about this all day, which uh, I enjoy. I have such a big smile on my face just having this conversation because these kind of pedantic arguments are my favorite because they don't actually mean anything or affect anyone. It's just good fun. But if you have a strong opinion, send us an email. Show, shoot us a message on, on the social medias. What do you got on the on the list of things to talk about, Mo? Six degrees of Sundion. Yes. <laughs> Do Celine it. Dion, a me, popular me, bitter coffee let podcast me, topic. Let me, let me just I'm assuming just she's a, a listener. I mean, what, we, we, we were like putting out free publicity for her mm-hmm. gender neutral clothing line. Yeah. Thank you, Celine, for festive. all you do. Yes. Well. <laughs> oh, this is cusable. It's you might want to cut a little bit of this. <laughs> every every episode now we gotta play this song. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> yes. Wait, just let me just let me drink it in. Just take it in. <laughs> let it change your life. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a recording ver- recorder version of My that Heart Will Go On. Wonderful. Thank you. I recorded it myself. <laughs> Oh, you brought Perfect. your recorder. You I brought your recorder. I really practice. Oh, we can jam. <laughs> <laughs> I 
know. It's like we just listened to that. We just listened to that. Live in the studio. I meant to, I meant to practice to get... <laughs> Oh, you're yeah. good. Oh, all I right. You're good. Wow. Yeah, Live in studio. I'm a professional. Do you, do you want me to just lay down some vocals? <laughs> yes. Mm. Got the drum kit. Yeah. 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 I could do that. Actually, I can pound my chest real hard. Is if that I'm down, going right? to cover any song with you guys, it's probably going to be Angel by Aretha Franklin. Nice. Because there's violin in it. Nice. I'm a cellist, but okay. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> String instrument. It's... <laughs> Same thing. No. Um, you could do keyboards. Sure. And I mean, how hard can it be to sing like Aretha Franklin? <laughs> <laughs> I can figure if that out. If time has taught us anything, okay. anybody can sing <laughs> like Aretha okay. Franklin. It's fine. No, I got it. It's NBD. those songs, they sing themselves. <laughs> they do. That's Aretha so, Franklin song. <laughs> that's my plan for our old person cover band. <laughs> <laughs> Which we still don't have a name, do we? The old person cover band. That's yeah, a great that would be good. That's a great name. That would be good. Because if you're over twenty three and in a band, you're an old person this right? is true yeah yeah That's or like so the sad. celery water players <laughs> <laughs> just constantly having to take breaks That's uh, it. we'll be we'll, we'll be right back we'll be right back yeah. we hope we hope we hope we'll a, be the penguin we'll cafe that. orchestra Ooh, oh. that's an actual yeah. is it penguin yeah. cafe orchestra but i'm just saying do they dress like in taxi like what's what why why i don't know they've been around for a long time that's okay their name. all right <laughs> they've, yes. they've stood the test of time if like I, penguins if, if i played it for you you would know what oh really? Like. I don't know if you want to hear it. But... Yeah, I do. Uh, so Why not? Hold, hold the phone. Here it is. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Oh, I know this. Yeah. I know this a lot. Yeah. I know this a lot. <laughs> I like that. Do you want me to lay down some vocals for sure. that too? Sure. I think it was an. I think it was an Apple commercial. I was yes. gonna say this has been in You're something, right? right? Yeah. It's, my, it's nice. My favorite. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Very nice. We can play that. Oh, yeah, that's... I was on the keyboards, right? No yeah. problem. Can you play that on no the problem. recorder? I have tried. <laughs> I'll work on that. Do you want to give week. it another try? <laughs> I could probably There's pick that, that up on would... the ukulele pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nailed Done. it. You Nailed totally it. Nailed Just it. loop that I'm and we are wow. into it. Thank the you. newest member of Thank the you. Penguin I'm here Cafe. Always. <laughs> I'm available for supermarket openings and bar mitzvahs. Bar mitzvahs. <laughs> It's wonderful. Uh, what else do we have? Let's oh, talk so about Six Degrees to... of Celine Dion. We didn't finish that. Yeah, so yeah. Six Degrees of Celine Dion is where we were, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what we were talking about. So talk to me, what else you got about so Six we Degrees of Celine Dion? So we were talking about this because it seems like everything revolves around here. It used to be Kevin Bacon. Right. Now really it's Celine Dion. Yep. Mm, so she is the new Kevin Bacon? She's yeah. The new Ke yeah. Interesting. It's about time. Well, she's got her hands in everything, right? Yeah. We talked about the clothing line. Do you she think seems she does pop single up space then. or a double space? Which do you think she does? Hmm. She does triple So she's Canadian. She does. Yeah, half a space. Yeah. I think yeah. she's a half a spacer. Oh, yeah. She just she just rips through things. Yeah, yeah. Or, or yeah, like, or, like alternates. It to someone. Yeah. Sometimes it's four spaces. She yeah. actually says, "Period, four spaces." Yeah. Next sentence, and then she's continuing to could talk. Could be English, could be French. That's a great point. Sure. She's dictating. She's no not actually knows. typing. Her no. hands have never hit a keyboard. No. <laughs> no, they haven't. <laughs> Do I have six degrees of separation Kevin, from Celine? Uh, Kevin Bacon. Oh, Jesus Kevin. Christ! Oh, I'm so old. <laughs> With my Kevin Bacon, my double spaces. Uh, no. Um, do I have six degrees of Celine Dion? I'm sorry. Celine Dion. 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 Do you have a Celine Dion connection? So has she done any duets with anyone? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So that's like kind of a way to... Because what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make a connection between me and Leo Sayer. Ooh, okay. And then Celine Dion. Why Leo Sayer? All by myself. Oh, <laughs> right, mm -hmm. right, okay. Okay, so I've got Josh Groban, for sure. Mm. Eight incredible Celine Dion duets. In sync. In sync, yep, oh, that's true. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Lance Bass. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can probably make a connection between me and Lance Bass. We're both gay, so we probably know each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I think, has Lance Bass been in any movies? Because mm. what I'm workshopping right now is... Me and my former roommate and one of my favorite people in the entire world, Ross Maxwell, who is now a writer for Sabrina, and he was oh, a writer wow, for right. Glee and oh, Riverdale. Well, I remember you talking about So him. then there's going to be an actor in there right. that we can connect to somebody who knew Lance Bass, who worked with, did Sync work with Celine Dion? Yeah, they did. They did a. I think so. Yeah, they did. Uh, CBS. They were on a CBS uh, special okay. together. 
So if Ross Maxwell knows people, uh, there's my six degrees right there. <laughs> it's me, it's Ross Maxwell. He knows a couple people so in the biz and then Lance Bass, Celine Dion. Okay, so, so. I just, I am you're welcome, Lance Bass. Are we aware that Lance Bass has acted a lot? Yeah, no. He's been in a lot of stuff. I have him as a as 54 acting credits. What? Lance Bass. Dating yeah, back to... Aren't some of them appearances on reality shows? I mean, probably, like but Vanderpump I'm Pump seeing rules. like... Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he was in Zoolander, apparently. Really? I didn't see Zoolander. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, he was obviously in sync in a lot of things. That's probably why he's in so many things. That makes but... a lot of sense, because I'm sure they might have put out a DVD or two. Well, and they were there was a Disney Channel connection there for a period of time, right? So oh. there's probably a lot of... I mean, he was in Zac Efron's pool party. I don't know if you caught that <laughs> wonderful film. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, not yet. <laughs> lots of animated films, interestingly oh, enough, yeah, I'm seeing. I wonder so if he's lovely. doing voice voice work. Yeah, he's been Wait, in a lot a of movie, stuff. Wait, it's a movie, Zac Efron's Pool Party? Uh, it, it is. Uh, that sounds saucy. <laughs> All right, if I could just quickly read the summary of Zac. Please. Zac Efron's Uncle Hank and his girlfriend Randy crash Zac's pool party, and they just cannot be cool. What? <laughs> That's the whole description of the movie. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> It's like 20 words. Hmm. And as you might expect, the cover of the movie is just Zac Efron in sunglasses. So Hank and, and Randy can't be cool? <laughs> that would have been Did a better title. gay abs? It's eight abs. Oh, it's a gay abs. <laughs> oh, wait, oh it, is, it could be. They're tomato, gay. tomato. I'm no idea it's of whether or not Zac Efron's abs are gay. Uh, yeah, Zac Efron's I'm uncle Hank and his I'm girlfriend Randy. I'm not going to judge Randy. his abs either way. No, okay. I have no you don't idea. You think Zac Efron's gay? No, no I think everybody's gay. <laughs> Everybody dips their toe in the pond every once in a while. <laughs> oh, I slipped. I was walking the dog. <laughs> With my abs. <laughs> Zach Efron, quite the renaissance right now, though, as he's been. He was in The Greatest Showman. I don't know if you saw that. Greatest Showman was fantastic. Oh, he was in uh, the new Baywatch movie. Uh, don't do not do that to yourself. Um, but yeah, he's been in a bunch of stuff. Big, big, big turnaround for Zach Efron recently. Good he was in, also in a Bombas commercial. Bombas socks. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yep. You got to diversify, you know, as yep. an actor. Zach oh. Efron understands that. Who's going to pay you to say something nice about your socks? <laughs> they're really good socks. Are though. they? Yeah, they're oh, fantastic. I think I know. They're getting and free it, publicity right now. And every time that you buy a pair they donate a pair to you get a pair shoppers. you buy a pair mm-hmm. that's how it works <laughs> nice. yeah nice. see there's two not one <laughs> it's a pair there's two grow a pair like with spaces oh i oh we're circling back to that <laughs> i see everything is if there's two rather than one. Oh, i've latched on to this it's it's gonna take days for me to let go <laughs> i'll be perfectly honest that's part of why She's i brought it up angry part of why um, i brought it up uh, by the way, uh, I'm Celine. not angry. I'm just disappointed. Go ahead, Mo. I'm Celine. sorry. No, sorry. no, 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 no. Celine Dion's family, uh, next town over from my grandmother's family <gasps> in the Canada in Canada. I mean, that's a connection right so there. So you're like two degrees of separation from Celine Dion. Be one. They may have known each other. So you're basically. I mean, I know you don't want to brag, but you're you're basically related to her. That's right. why I have the musical ability. Is that, that what it I is? Do. It's the recording. We're I mean, truly recorder. sisters. I know she's a little thinner than I am. The resemblance is uncanny. <laughs> Now that I'm looking at you, that oh we did a, we it. did a chest pound. Yeah. It was and how many times did verbatim. you how many times did you pound your chest? Twice. Just the, oh the two times. The two times. Okay. Yeah. Rather than one. Yep. Uh huh. Well, because that's what Just normal saying. people do. That's right. Oh, in twos. <laughs> Bam. Bam. Oh. <laughs> I was I was waiting. I was waiting. This is not going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you put that many spaces, it's problematic, but okay. That's I gotcha. fantastic. I gotcha. What else do we have? What else is going on? Uh, Boy, this show really went off the rails really quickly, <laughs> didn't it? Were there rails for this show? I'm um, pretty sure this was the, or the route without rails to begin with. Speaking of rails, I had a conversation with someone earlier today where listening to our show caused some uh, uh, unrest and safety issues. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's what we aim for. Yep. Were Dangerous listening. Car? Uh, yes, one of them was. Okay. I'm, of, I'm fascinated by this already. The person, uh, One of our listeners was laughing and had to pull over. Nice. Yeah, for fear of getting into an accident. Mission accomplished. Very good of them to do that. Very good. Yes. And then another person was on a bus. Okay. And had to stop listening the- to the podcast because she was laughing so hard she felt like she was, you know, maybe causing a scene. <laughs> What you're gonna say? She asked the bus driver to pull. Over. Yeah, can you pull I'm over? I'm gonna need you to stop the bus. Can you pull over? Something's this really funny so right funny. now, and I need to laugh. Everybody's gonna be late for their destinations. 
I can't even watch you drive and laugh this hard. I yeah, need yeah. I need you to pull over. Stop so, this bus immediately. I do have to say that last week's uh, podcast, mm-hmm. when you slowed down my voice, <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> She we hot, we right? could have played the entire episode, and I would have just still I continued laughing. I want to talk like this all the time. We were gonna do a <laughs> podcast, but I'm a freaking alcoholic. <laughs> gotcha. I can't be trusted to show up on time. Understandable. Why do I sound like Bill Cosby? <laughs> I've got my pudding pops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you some. <laughs> it it really it was one you of said my. It exactly like Bill Cosby when did. you said pudding pops. <laughs> that needs to go in your resume. It does. <laughs> Can you do it again? Bill Cosby pudding pops. <laughs> <laughs> I got my pudding pops. I got the pudding pops. It's the pops part that's really really high quality. Man, that's good. Amazing. I am multi talented. Wow, that is podcast quite a star, talent. recorder, performer, Bill you. Cosby impersonator. She's Louise. Amazing. You could take that show on the road and. Two oh, seconds. Yeah. Two so seconds. Many. I'm just but coming into my own now. That was oh, one of the joys fantastic. of my of my editing life was going through and listening, re-listening to us played back slowly. Because <laughs> I just wonderful. Was I never realized. I now want to sample a lot of other podcasts at half speed and see and just hear like what would this podcast sound like? Hammered. This is what yeah. it would sound like. It's good stuff. It's when we great. were talking about this yesterday, though, we made a reference to Devil Goes Down to Georgia, and I don't know how that <laughs> connection. Because it's just, it's the ping pong of our conversations. That's, just, that's, ping pong that's all it is. I see. There's a back and forth within Devil Goes Down to Georgia as well. Yeah. Well, I have an issue with Devil oh, Goes Down to was. Georgia. That's or wait, Devil went down to Georgia? I want to use the proper terminology. Yeah, wait, I'll pull it up. Did, I think yeah, it's, did he go or is he going? And I think that's the question that I raised. <laughs> I see. Like, right. did he ever get to Georgia? Because, oh, and has he come back from Georgia? Right. Interesting. Like, did he get there? And here's the thing that I have an issue with that song. Devil went down Yeah, to went Georgia. down to. Okay. Yeah. So he did, we can assume that he the went there. Yeah. Right. Because he was looking. <laughs> For anyone who's not familiar with. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. 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 There's that. Yeah, the high fiddle. Love it. All right, so for anybody who has not There's not a lot of fiddle in that song. Well, There's yeah. one section, basically. Right, yeah. but it's the like keyboards. The middle mm-hmm. and the end. Probably the most famous fiddle song, Very Little Fiddle, yeah. as it turns out. Right. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. He was I have, looking for a soul to steal. Well, he was in a bind. He was way behind. He <laughs> I was, needed to eat my toe. He was looking to make know. a deal. deal. Right. So you were you Fabulous. were wondering if it did he ever leave Georgia? Has he returned from like, Georgia? Did he get there? Like yeah. he was he double went down to Georgia. Like yeah. what you know? Obviously we know what happened when he got there. Sure. But like, is he still there? Right. I remember that song as a little kid because I'm Me super too. old. Do you remember if you listened to it in the car with your parents? You could say like "son of a bitch" right. when it was <laughs> on the radio, and you're like, "I'm singing the lyrics." I'm just bringing it up, and then there's the, cl- the clean version and the dirty version. "Son wow. of a bitch" is oh, what they wow. yeah. Oh, well, they, he bitch. does say "son of a gun." Yeah, which, "son of a gun" on the radio. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> but he said sometimes on you know more you know cutting edge radio stations they leave in the "son of a bitch." How'd you learn to be like? How'd you learn bitch. to swear? Well, yeah, was that devil went down to Georgia song? And then. When I listen to that song, and oddly enough, I listen to it more often than I care to admit, <laughs> I'll sing it in that southern accent. Yeah. It, like, it sounds like me singing like um, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> or as I like to call her, Huckleberry Slanders. <laughs> That's my little pet name for her. I went through Slander. a phase saying to Michelle, look, ah, <laughs> Look, ah, over and over again. And now what I'm fixated on now is um, ask me ask me what the abbreviation is for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Okay, so how do you abbreviate the Federal Bureau of Investigation? FBI. <laughs> I've been saying that for two days since the Mueller report came out. FBI. FBI. Yeah. And it turned out that they found that she was lying. Yes. And she said it was like a well, slip of the tongue. It's like, really? For like... Really... I mean, do we not want to get into it? No, well, I'm just saying, okay. are, are you surprised? No, I'm not. But then she kind of backtracked from it. Mm-hmm. She was like, yeah, I lied. And then went on TV. She like she had a lot of FaceTime on Thursday and Friday saying like, well, I'm not like a robot like the Democrats. <laughs> like, that's her <laughs> argument. I'm not like good at talking words. Yeah. Exactly. Get out of here You're with the that accusation. Secretary. I thought she was quitting. I thought she was leaving. I think she's going to get fired. 
What else do we have? What else? What What else is on the agenda? Um, the agenda. The old agenda. I just had intermittent fasting and oh, funerals. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Because they go hand in hand. Yeah, I was going to say one, if not done properly, might lead, <laughs> lead to, the, to other. the other. So, Mo, you and I were talking the other day, and you are doing an intermittent fast. That's correct. And earlier today, you referred to it because you're having coffee. Uh, a you dirty referred fast. to a dirty fast. Oh, yeah. isn't that a great term? That is a, a great term. Yeah. I, I love that Justin Timberlake just so I album. Could say dirty fast. <laughs> what are you doing right now? Dirty fast. It's a dirty great, fasting. Dirty great Timberlake fast. album. Dirty fast. Fast is so dirty. <laughs> so. Dirty. It's fast, but it's dirty. <laughs> it's dirty. You gotta a dirty, dirty fast. So that yeah. means you can have like liquids dirt. or like, dirt. You can eat mud and dirt <laughs> right. and dust. Right. It's a very dirty fast. Dirty. So yeah, define a dirty fast for us. Well, first of all, intermittent fasting is uh, a, a period of time where you're not eating, mm-hmm. and then a window of time where you feed. I, oh wow! Seriously? Feed, yes. You gotta take it seriously. So the most popular one is 16 hours off, eight hours on. So okay. I I eat from noon to eight. And okay. Then you stop. Gotcha. That's it. That's it. It's the easiest thing ever. Mm-hmm. And so clean fast is it's just black coffee, green tea, water, um, seltzer with no flavor. Okay. Gotcha. Dirty fast is when you put cream in your coffee, mm. a, a flavored seltzer. I see. That kind of stuff. Interesting. Wow. So Dirty. there's a distinct differentiation between black coffee yeah. and then coffee with something else right. in it. Wow. Right. That's pretty serious. So um, good for you. I'm not sure that's something I could well, do. So, so is it like easy. clear liquids it's that you totally can drink? Easy. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> right? not, I do drink on my feeding times. Okay. A Merlot is allowed in a dirty fast. A right. Chardonnay would be, a, you know, clean fast. Gotcha. <laughs> it's easy to do. It's many health benefits. It lowers your cholesterol. It lowers your blood sugar. It lowers really? your blood. Uh, BP, your blood pressure. I was going to suggest that it would lower my will to live, but good for you. It's really, there's a there's like a whole a community of people out there that do this. My doctor actually told me to do it. Nice. Was yeah. it tough for you to like just eat between twelve and eight? No. Did you have any instances where you like freaked out somewhere? <laughs> no. Have your you blood no. sugar? Have you just no. never been a be- breakfast person anyway. I'm one of those people not, who doesn't yeah. normally eat in the morning as it is. So I tend to eat uh, in the afternoon when I get home from work. Gotcha. So for me, if yeah, I yeah, so it just makes sense. You could sense. do nine to five. You could do eleven to seven. You could do whatever. You as long do. as it's eight hours. Eight hours. Interesting. And there's and there's different. You could do a twenty four hour fast. You can people do up to seventy two hours. Oh wow. Yeah. Do you think you'd be able to do that? Um, yeah, I think I could at some point. I think so. And you and feel good. Work out on it. I feel great. I sleep better. I don't snore as much. <laughs> Thanks to everybody in my world. <laughs> really. Yeah, poor Gregory. When we go on tour, he's like. oh. <laughs> like a breathe right Confined strip spaces. are you beyond the breathe right strip I do strip? use it it helps yeah. a little bit but it's mostly Tears from skin off your nose a little bit yeah. yeah and I have to make sure I don't get it on my nose ring because <laughs> I just oh. Oh. hey oh good morning hey. ow no it doesn't oh my hurt God. but yeah there's a lot of benefits to it so wow yeah. and you're happy fasting. with it yeah I lost nine pounds get in, out in congrats a half wow nice. Christmas, yeah. right on I feel great how long have you been slower? doing it uh, about uh, 10 days. That's it. So you're yeah. losing like a pound a day. Pretty much. Right That's... now. A lot of it right now is water weight, but yeah. This, doesn't matter. Pound's people, pound, girl. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Very cool. Feel great. Good. Yeah. I, I, good for you. There's no, I I have no willpower when Look it comes to it. food. There's a lot of, of good information online and a lot of support out there. So on can Facebook. You, can you eat whatever you want to eat yeah, in those I had eight pizza. hours? I had pizza last night. I had um, whatever, lunch. A sandwich, maybe. I mean, I still stay away from gluten stuff because I'm not doesn't my body doesn't like it. But right, and I had a couple glasses of wine. There. Oh, I had a gin and tonic. Okay, <laughs> couple right. glasses hey, of wine. Hey, easy, no judgment. <laughs> okay, firing in, tonic. firing in on gin and tonic. Me. Well, because you'll call me a gin soaked whore bag or something. No, probably. no, Seriously. no. We would I, never. I once referred to one of our former coworkers as a gin soaked <laughs> raisin, and. But, oh, wow. That's but it picture. applied. It's, you know what I mean? You'd look at it and you'd be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It wasn't totally a stretch, yeah. so I felt it was appropriate. If I were to say, go down the hallway. If you make a left, you're going to look for somebody who looks like a gin soaked raisin. <laughs> you, you know who you were talking it. about? Yeah, God, absolutely. You'd find your way. Yeah, I mean, Take was, a left at the second vagina. You'll exactly, find the gin soaked raisin. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's her. Yeah, that's it's she, fine. Bang a red at that point. A little boozy. And then you said you wanted to talk about funerals. I could talk about funerals all day long well only for, so my perspective i've done a lot of funerals lately i played them i've gone to them a lot in the last like two months what we need in this world is like a and the and the funeral parlors the funeral mm-hmm. they're not called parlors anymore what funeral are they homes. Oh, funeral homes. homes yeah funeral providers providers really need to um 
employ a master of ceremonies. Oh, girl, you, you know, were singing we need my song to right celebrate now. life. And listen, I get that I'm Catholic. I get the Catholic mass. That's a part of it. But the other part of it should be we are celebrating someone's life, how long or short or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Right. And we should because you go. We went to the Elks Club afterwards for this one person who everybody adored mm-hmm. and everybody went to the Elks Club. Usually that doesn't happen. Sure. And they shared stories and they laughed. And but there should have been someone there that like <clears throat> is the one that wrangles everybody. Right. You know, and like, yeah, me, when I die, I want you to have belly dancers. Okay. <laughs> I want you to have jugglers. Now you've ruined the surprise. I, I want to so be a fire swallower of some kind. That'd be so great. I want to be roasted. Okay. Not lit. Well, maybe Okay, literally. hang on now. Right. All right, let's be specific. <laughs> but that's a great idea. Yes. I think it's an untapped market. Yeah. And when when I die, I do want people to have a roast. Yeah, oh, I don't sure. want it to be solemn. No. You know, like hop on the mic here. Yeah, do do a show. <laughs> totally. And you know, I'll haunt you from the, beyond. The Kelly Coffee Memorial like, Podcast episode. Oh my god, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Michelle's dad did not want a funeral. Mm-hmm. He was cremated. He donated his body to the medical center, nice. or to the college rather. Right. Um, same thing, tomato tomato. Yeah. Um, and he had plans for a party. Nice. So all these local musicians in the Burlington area came and played sets. Like Ray Vega came and That's played a I set. Nice. Like, and it was it was fun. It was a party. It was yeah. a celebration of his life. Like I I. We even put up decorations. Yes. Um, which I thought was yes. really great. Like, yes. that's what he yeah. wanted. And, like, funerals are so typically, I mean, understandably, people are, are somber. I get it. But they're, it, it only adds to the awkwardness if it doesn't feel organized, if it just feels like it's sort of happening at everyone. Your point yeah. about having an MC, someone who's kind of pulling things together and, and kind of hosting the event. Yeah. Because it is an event and you want to be celebratory, like yeah. you were saying. I agree. A life it, celebration. Exactly. Uh, not coach, but you know, I don't know what what word you. No, use, an MC. I think yeah, that's I think MC is perfect. Master of ceremony. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. I, I totally agree. I don't want people to be sad and yeah, down at my at my funeral. I want people to be like, yes, we enjoyed being around him when we had the opportunity. Yeah. Yep. Let's celebrate I mean, that. There's a place for being sad about yeah. it, but let's, let's. We talked early on about like what we would want in terms of music at our funeral, yep. and like none of it was, you know, super somber stuff. Like I want, I want a recap of the '90s ska and hip hop experience at my funeral. That's what, is do what you I want would like at your funeral. Uh, the music wise, yeah, yeah. Gregory Douglas. Anything yeah. like covers. Oh, um. because I went through a whole thing like, okay, when I'm when my body. Well, I think I might be cremated now. I don't know. Mm. I yeah, I plans change. So like if I were to be in a coffin when my body's rolled into a church, assuming I'm even in a church, like Mm -hmm. I want a specific song played. Yeah. And then I want other songs like, you know, during the mass or like, you know, the party. Yeah. And then after celebration part. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? If you if you had to. Mine would be Ice Ice Baby. <laughs> That's appropriate. I think it's very appropriate. And then a series of Springsteen songs. Nice. Mm-hmm. Sprinkled throughout the ceremony. Sure. And I forget what I was going to close with. Yeah, you had something very specific. Really we'll have to review the pod to figure yeah. out what you had said. But yeah, yeah I, I, you know, I, I would, know. I don't know if I mentioned it at the time, but I definitely want, like, play that funky music, White Boy. I think I mentioned that. that I may have mentioned that. Great. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, a lot of Jaw Rule. A lot of DMX at my funeral. Mm-hmm. I want I people to know that I have pa- I have passed away, and they would know if that oh, was the I'll collection of music. All right, Sorry, we can put a pin in it. That's yeah, fine. We'll come back to it. The at working some point. hour. My favorite. Oh song my god! Yes. I watched that again last night. Did you? He really? does not look good, by the way. The lead singer of uh, Tears for Fears, Roy Orzabal, I believe is, that is his name. name? Is? Oh wow! Yeah, I think so. His well eyes are very puffy in the, the the video I was watching last night. Really? Yeah, they did a live version of the working hour, and he just looks he's bizarre. Anyway, I think. <laughs> Anyway. I adore him. I do too. I mean, I love the band. I love the music. But now it's just one guy, right? Didn't the other guy leave? No, he was there. Oh, he was. He, he just might have left. Tear for fears. Yeah. <laughs> tear. tear for fear. Tear for fear. Tear for fear. Yeah. One tear for one fear. <laughs> <laughs> you have two vaginas in Winooski, but only Single one tear, tear for each fear. <laughs> for each fear. <laughs> if you're in an 80s, shed band. but one tear for each fear. Songs from the big chair is to go back to desert island bands. Nice. I would bring that album with me. Okay. I would bring songs from the big chair. Not the extended one that no. has all those extra songs that I've never heard before. Yeah, I know. But I would I would bring that with me. Yep. You know you know the that whole story. I know what you're okay. Yep. Right. Current actually No, but I mean you know the story of the album. I don't know. It's stories do. about a a 
a person who's meeting with their psychiatrist. Oh, if you listen to it, it's it, not based it, on Lily Tomlin's life. That's it's where not, I was. That's where no, I was headed. Tales no. from the big chair. Okay, it's it's stories that a psychiatrist is telling either to or about his patient, and then mm. the patient is relaying stories back. I am so, gonna go listen. To I love it. I know concept. you have to. It's reframes amazing. everything. That's so cool. now mother's talk has a totally different Son meaning in your head. <laughs> I know. I feel um, like I just kind of threw down the 80s gauntlet. You did. Wait a minute. I want to mark this date in history. Okay. 420, 2019. <laughs> it's easy to remember. <laughs> I told Mo Citro something that she doesn't know about. Uh, about 80s shit. music? This is the only time it this has is happened. ever going to happen. <laughs> it has happened. There you go. Gone. Yeah. Yeah, nice. This is going to be the yeah. air horn episode. You know, I, I love don't it. profess to know everything about music. But you know a lot about music. Well, here's a question I actually had on the way over here. In terms of music that you're listening to now, because I feel like there are camps of people and you go through periods as well. Like, do you do you listen to anything new new or do you listen to music that you have been listening to for years and years and years? Because I think there's often two camps of people because I go through huge sections of my life where I'm only listening to things I listened to 10 years ago yeah 15 years ago for long stretches for months at a time and then I might discover a band that I get into for a period right, I'm curious mix. where you guys yeah it's kind a of a mix Sadie brings me a lot of stuff because she's a, oh nice the millennial sure, sure. like Ariana Grande <laughs> Ariana Grande Ar- Ariana Grande she's from Chicago she's from Chicago it's my favorite paint color check out that bitch <laughs> I love this bathroom it's sort of an Ariana Grande <laughs> If possible, you walk great. into Starbucks. Can I get an Ariana? <laughs> yeah, can I get an Ariana Grande? <laughs> that's, that's, I'm sure that joke's never been done. No, before. it's the first one to make that joke. But no, <laughs> Kelly, what about you? Are, do, are you picking up? Are you picking up new stuff here and there, or is it is it mostly things I that am. you've fallen back on? I do. I, I'm old school. I'm mm-hmm. steeped in tradition, as you both Love it. know. So there's like a ton of music that I listen to. Songs from Big Chair being mm, one of them. Great one. But uh, because of Spotify, yes. they will recommend other artists yeah which is great and that's how i found i think i was listening to balanescu quartet when i found the composer max richter you sent that to me i think i did Fantastic. i send you a lot you of do. stuff she that does. i find and I just because that. i know that you'd probably like it that's always fun too is be like i found this i like it you will probably like it too that's mm-hmm. one of exactly. the joys of my life is sending things to people yeah, i sh- think they'll share like share music that's the best gift you yeah can do. Exactly. everybody out there you don't Especially have to be on spotify just gonna say that yeah i, I would singer agree. songwriters share their music join their email lists yeah go see live music support independent artists and live music i, I think there's there's the kind of dependence on radio that has always sort of existed but i love the idea of i heard this person they are not super famous you should check them out yep they deserve uh, it playing at the lamp shop gonna throw that out there right now june 7th at the lamp, shop. the lamp shop the lamp shop <laughs> with the great gregory douglas when That's are you doing time. that june 7th i think is i'll double check my calendar we should have him on the show we're gonna have him on the show okay. we gotta have him on the show nice. Still. Yeah. nice speaking of having people on the show it probably bears mentioning that uh this guy is going to be on paternity leave mm-hmm. at some point fairly soon. When's the due date? Uh, the due date is May 25th. Okay. Now, anytime now. Anytime now anytime is essentially now. the timeline Jesus. at this point. So, Are you getting nervous? Um, uh, more and more, yeah. I think. And, uh, you know, we have, it, it's been obviously very front of mind for our, in our lives for months and months now. So I think I've kind of gotten used to the idea, but it's the unknown that everyone fears and is nervous about. And we don't know what the hell we're doing. This is our first child. So there's a little bit of that. I'm excited, though. I'm, I'm excited to figure it all out and be in the midst of it and be sort of there's a there's a joy in learning something new that I have sort of a, a vibe for with this as well because I'm I again have no idea I was talking to Michelle earlier about the whole section of life that exists as it relates to babies we were specifically talking about like trying to buy diapers because there are a billion and I'm none sure of the a lot of choices it's overwhelming it's like coffee yeah <laughs> I mean, diapers and coffee as a mom uh, listen. You do what you want. Yeah, you know, find yeah. find what works for you. Right. It's the same idea. You experiment. You find the thing that works. You yeah. stick to it. You you find a coffee order. You like your Ariana Grande. You get that every day. <laughs> That's right. Same idea. You find the diapers you like. You stick to it. Exactly. Yeah. I. It's so we're excited, but um, that is all to say that this is this. You know, I'm excited to pass the torch. And for y'all to take the podcast under your wing, uh, and I'm looking forward to, to hearing what you guys put out. But you know, we may I may be in another episode some point soon. Who knows? Who knows? Things change quickly. Um, so just wanted to put that out there. Uh, we- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a celebratory time. I can equate having a baby like okay, but maybe not really. So I dropped this. <laughs> 
<laughs> are not real. Immediate backpedal before the story. I dropped off my bicycle mm-hmm. last week for mm-hmm. a tune-up. Yep. And I'm super excited to get it back. Yeah. I'm sure like the excitement of having babies probably like my bicycle excitement times like oh right God. on par. You have no idea. Like 37 or 38 <laughs> times more excited. <laughs> I like right? the specificity there. Yeah. Probably 37 or 38 right? times more right. exciting. Like it's going to be super exciting. I could a new pair of shoes. I don't know how excited you are for your bike. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> I can't wait to hold it. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait, wait to... to ride it to work. Well, we're finally in a place where going outside and riding your bike is feasible again. Is so, it? Is it? Well, I, don't know. I mean, it's a day-to-day decision. Not with Not the rats right in the street all over Winooski. <laughs> Making right. the way downtown. Right. Um, is that it? I think. <laughs> Are you? I, I'm feeling like I don't know. Like what's that musical? The Jets. It's the Jets and the. Yes. West Side Story. West Side Story. Story. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Speaking of musicals, I saw Mamma Mia. You did. At the Flynn. I didn't get a chance. Here we go again. Yeah. Serena killed it, I heard. She's amazing. Yeah, she did. So my father-in-law and I went to go see the show with him and some of his theater friends. And they're wonderful people. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the theater with my father-in-law. Yeah. And he says, so uh, the woman who plays the mother in Mamma Mia, I've been intimate with her. No. (laughs) No, I know her intimately. I know her intimately. And I'm like, oh, Dinner went so well, <laughs> and then we took this weird turn. I and suddenly love that he things wanted to share turn. that. With but you, it was though. because they worked together on Titanic in Stowe. Okay, wow. and there's no place to like change costumes or clothes in the uh, theater. Yeah, so there's everybody saw show. everybody else's bits. Mm, gotcha. Mm-hmm. So I know was, her intimately. Yeah, I, I know that. her intimately. And I was like, man, we're so close to just having a great night. <laughs> this was going so and normal. It got, it got weird. And then you made it weird. I thought it was a really great show. Serena did totally kill it. Um, and one of my friends at work said, yeah, she was okay. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, Serena, don't I just, even listen to I know, that. You are amazing. I know. Call I her Serena her. Dion. Ser- hey, that voice. nice. She was wonderful. Well done. Yeah, just like support local bands, support support your local theater troupe and support people Truly. doing live theater. That is not easy. As no. someone who is in a number of middle school plays, I can say <laughs> that... <laughs> the theater is really it's a difficult life. place yeah. to live, and you know, there's there a was, lot of pressure. You know, as a twelve-year-old, you yeah. know, treading the boards on and a legit stage. Ultimately, <laughs> you know, the, the applause is important, and it does give you life. And I appreciate everyone who came out in those days. Um, but it built me into someone who could really give a presentation at my workplace. Oh, wow. um, and I never would have been able to do that without playing bit roles that had no lines in middle school plays. So thank you. I thank you, everyone who supported my theater career. Never did it. Why? I was, I was always in the pit band. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wah, wah. And the, the lead, the female lead, It added Sophie. to the sound effect. Thank you. Sophie's a junior in high school. Which one wow. Sophie? The, the Sophie, the, the lead in Mamma Mia. Wow, good for her. I this was a, oh, it's Sophie's the mom. Okay. Well, it's the daughter. It, it's about her. Okay. It's about her marriage. Right. So whatever was it? I don't. I don't know what the character's name is. I think it's Sophie. And this was at the Flynn, right? This is at the Flynn. Nice. Yeah, she's a junior yes. in high school. Oh, wow. I think actually, I think friend of the show Emily was uh, taking tickets for that show. I think she posted what? on Facebook, if you're going to see Mamma Mia, I'll be taking tickets for the show. I'm pretty sure that's what she said. So you probably ran across I Emily. probably ran across yep. her. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I wish I knew. <laughs> I saw your post about going to the show shortly after, like the next day after when she had posted the day before that she was going to be at the show. I'm pretty sure, but yeah. I did ask the person who took my ticket if they were having a nice evening. Well, that's because you're kind and considerate yeah. and want but to But if know it was things. her, like, hey, Emily! <laughs> that's, it would have been a very different vibe. I the Flynn! <laughs> Yeah. Star-crossed folks. That's one of, another one of those Vermont stories. It's like everyone knows each other. We everyone do. sees yep. each other at all times. Those things do There's happen. There's not six degrees here. There's two. Yeah. There's two. Or, or negative 25. to Derek, there's only one. one. All right. I guess that's about a podcast. Yeah. Uh, it feels like it's about a podcast. The podcast. We For tied that sure. one up into a bow. <laughs> Hot cross buns. Hot cross buns, go. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it.
make. <laughs> well, Mo, thank you as always for being here. Uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful time having My you on the show again. Uh, thank you all for listening. We really appreciate you. Uh, if you want to hit us up on the email, bittercoffeepot at gmail.com. Hit us up on the social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want to find us. Uh, our intro and outro music is Hold Me Down by John Worthy and the Benz. And we will catch you all on the next episode. Stay fresh, cheese bags. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Woo!